Welcome everyone to the American College of Cardiology Innovation Stage. My name is Dr. Jeff Carr from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And today I'm going to talk about the application of cutting edge dual source CT as applied to structural heart disease and cardiac imaging. I'd like to start with a clinical case. This is a patient that came in with hemoptysis and dyspnea. It was not really a cardiac specific case, as you can see. Um, you can see there are multiple pulmonary emboli as well as areas of pulmonary hemorrhage. One of the major advances in CT is the ability to freeze cardiac and vascular motion, providing unparalleled detail both of the vascular structures as well as the lung structures. In this particular case, although imaging for pulmonary embolism is a common indication, does not require cardiac gating, but when you have a dual source CT, every CT becomes a cardiac CT. And as you can see on this, you can see in the transaxial view, the left ventricle was dilated. You can notice there is some soft tissue in the apex of the heart. But since every CT is a cardiac CT, to understand what's going on, it's very helpful to go into the cardiac planes. And as you can see on the upper right in a three chamber view, and then in a two chamber view, we're able to identify thrombi that were present not only in the left ventricle apex, but also in the right ventricle. As many of you know, the right ventricle because of mixing of contrast is very difficult to image with CT but by having the higher temporal resolution, detailed evaluation of many of the structures of the heart that were not possible before is now possible with routine imaging. Now, the reason I like to start with this non-cardiac CT case is that dual source CT and high temporal resolution CT impacts every patient on the system, that by having this resolution, we're able to make new diagnoses that really change patient care and have the ability to improve patient outcomes. So over the next 10 to 20 minutes, what I wanna review with you is dual source CT technology. I'm gonna pay specific attention to how we use dual source CT to freeze cardiac motion. So we'll talk a little bit about the technology and then I wanna talk about clinical applications how you can use the same technology to image the heart without contrast, to image native heart valves, transcatheter heart valves, surgical heart valves, and then talk about imaging the heart after the implantation of the valve. So let's get started. So in the beginning, Dr. Hounsfield invented the CT, and this was his setup for building the technology that became computed tomography. This is an example of the very first clinical CT scanner. It's the EMI Mark I, uh, circa 1973. This CT scanner was able to generate 13 millimeter thick slices. It took five mil minutes per slice to acquire an image. Uh, Dr. Hounsfield and Cormac won the Nobel Prize, and I think all would agree that the invent of CT and the ability to look inside the living human being has been a profound change to the patient experience, improving healthcare across the body from the head to the heart to the toe. So from here, I wanna talk about 2006 and the advent of the dual source CT, which is effectively two CT scanners within one gantry. You have an A tube and an A detector and a B tube and a B detector. So this two CT in one allows us to gain dramatically in temporal resolution compared to a single uh, tube detector combination. So with a single source CT scanner rotating very quickly at 33 seconds per rotation, the max temporal resolution you can get is between 83 and 160 milliseconds, whereas the same gantry speed is between 483 
Today, with even faster gantry speeds, we're routinely able to image the heart at 66 milliseconds per image. So this is an example of what I consider a technological marvel. Uh, here we're looking inside the gantry. You can see over here is the A-tube, which shoots x-rays to hit the A detector over here. And then here is the B-tube and the B detector. Now, looking at the inside of electronics is always impressive. You know, how do they pack all that stuff inside the case of a CT scanner or inside the case of your computer? But the key thing about dual source CT and the engineering that's gone into it is not only is this very dense as far as electronics, but all of this is done with no wires connecting it. So it's all on the rotating frame. So here you'll see tube A, tube B, the high KV tubes at 140 kilovolts, low energy detectors, all spinning up to 0.25 seconds per rotation. Truly amazing uh, that this is able to do this without a single wire connecting any of the components in the rotating frame of view. So with this advanced technology, we've been able to have marked improvements from the very first. So the slices per rotation, we've gone from one slice per rotation in 1973 to now we're acquiring 384 slices in one rotation. The slice thickness was originally 13 millimeters with the first clinical CT. Now we're at sub-millimeter. We do routinely do 0.6 millimeters. We can even get smaller in some lower acquisition modes. The original CT took five minutes to reconstruct one image uh, or had a temporal resolution of five minutes for a single image, whereas today that's 66 milliseconds. So that's 4,545 times improvement. That allows us to image, uh, say for structural heart and transcatheter aortic valve implantations, the entire aorta and pelvic arterial vessels in only a few seconds, all with the same contrast that we image the aortic root. So this gives us another point to talk about, spatial resolution. So very fast scanning without high spatial resolution does not allow you to look at the leaflets of the aortic or mitral or tricuspid valve, does not allow us to look at the indications that we're interested in. So with a dual source CT scanner and modern CT, we have a 512 by 512 matrix, which gives us a pixel dimension of approximately 0.6 by 0.6 millimeters. This coupled with a very thin slice of 0.6 millimeters gives us what's called isotropic resolution. And what this means is after the scans acquired, you can look at any angle and can do curved reformats along the anatomy irregardless of how the scan was acquired. So although we acquire in the axial plane, because of isotropic resolution, we can go back after the fact and look along the aorta, cross section, left main coronary artery, all without compromising spatial resolution. So now I wanna talk about something that you probably did not think I was gonna talk about, and that is imaging with high resolution cardiac CT uh, without contrast. So one of the clinical indications that I think everyone can do with a high, sor high dual source CT is look at mechanical heart valves. Often there is a concern, is the valve functioning properly? This is a case that we did, uh, I believe three weeks ago. Here are the source images where you basically image the chest uh, just like you would a cardiac CT, you limit the field of view, but with EKG gating, we acquire over the mechanical heart valve, and that allows you to do very high resolution reformats where you can actually look at the valve closed, valve open, you can do that in profile, and you can do that on FOSS. And so this is an example of a normal mechanical valve functioning of somebody that could not receive contrast. And so we were able to move the ball down the court by taking that out of consideration. 
You can even go in and measure the angles of each valve in three dimensions uh, to make sure that the valve is performing at the specifications of the original heart valve manufacturer. This is another case. In North America, we're faced with an opioid epidemic. And one of the concerns that uh, complications of that is the presence of endocarditis. And this is an example of a case of a gentleman that was very sick, was known to have endocarditis, but the full extent was not known. By echo, we knew there were vegetations, but as you can see on these CT images where we acquired a 4D data set using a dual source site CT at high temporal resolution in a very sick patient, that not only was there a vegetation, not only was there a bicuspid aortic valve, but there was also a fistula between the non-coronary sinus and the right atrium. In addition, this fistula and the abscess partially involved the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. And so by having very high resolution, we're able to capture the entire cardiac cycle from systole to diastole, we're able to aid in the surgical planning, help the surgeon understand the complexity of the abscess, the presence of the fistula between the aneurysm in the coronary sinus, the fistula right here, the location at the tricuspid annulus, and aid in the planning for the surgical procedure. The next phase of the talk, I wanna talk about how cardiac CT and dual source CT can help in identification of both native bicuspid valves as well as surgical and transcatheter heart valves. Because you're able to freeze motion and get 3D applications, you can actually use the CT to both identify native valves, in this case, a Seavers type zero, you, know, you can see the right coronary arteries coming off the right cusp, left cusp over here. You can see the two commissures. So this is a Seavers type zero with a large vegetation on it. Here's another case that was not in an acute setting where we have even better image quality, where again, you can see the two commissures, Seavers type zero, a true bicuspid aortic valve. and just scroll through and you can see from top to bottom you can freeze motion evaluate the coronary ostea look for a variety of things that aid in surgical planning the more common type one uh, you can see this is an example of a raffe between the left sinus and the right sinus you can see the left coronary artery, LAD, right coronary artery would be over here, interatrial septum. The three-dimensional high-resolution spatial resolution allows you to see this level of detail on the na native aortic valve in the setting of thickened leaflets, in the setting of stenosis, and in the setting of coronary and cardiac motion. Here's an example of a right to non-coronary fusion or a type 1B, 15% prevalence. And then lastly, the type C, where we have fusion between the left sinus and the non-coronary. And again, the detail that's available by doing a four-dimensional CT is truly astounding. And then the key thing is there's so much information on these, you have to be careful that you don't focus just on the aortic valve and miss the thrombus in the left atrial appendage. So again, cardiac CT, multi-phases, whole heart imaging, entirely feasible with dual source CT. As we move on to both surgical and transcatheter heart valve, the capability to freeze motion, create 3D and 4D motion images, allows us when the medical record may not be complete, when information is not available, or maybe it's misleading, we can identify the type of valve, we can identify, as in the case here, a valve and valve procedure, uh, a Medtronic valve uh, with a Perimont, within a Perimont valve, 
uh, we can actually image valve and valve procedures. Here's a case of a surgical heart valve with the leaflets on the outside of the valve, a trifecta valve, which has certain implications as to planning for transcatheter heart valve. Again, the ability to identify the surgical valve, and in this case with retention sutures, is only possible because of the high spatial and high temporal resolution that allows us to image not only the basal ring, not only the retention sutures, not only the lift leaflets of the surgical valve, but we can look at them closed and determine that there's no thrombus or other abnormality. Lastly, I wanna talk about the com uh, concept of uh, HALT or hypoattenuating leaflet thickening. Uh, this may be considered thrombus on the leaflets. In order to do this, you have to have the ability to image through the stent frame or through the basal ring of the surgical heart valve. This is a statement on the grading system that came out in 2019, where you can see how this hypoattenuating leaflet thickening occurs and progresses. This is not a talk on that, but to show you that in order to image this after valve implant, you need to have the temporal resolution as well as the photon flux or the power to image at KV and MAS in order to image inside the transcatheter heart valve. You know, once you realize this uh, and you've seen a couple of these, it becomes obvious. Typical scenario is a patient has had a heart valve implanted. They come for their uh, post heart valve echo and their gradients have increased from the time of pre-implantation. Here you can see hypoattenuating material within two of the leaflets. Here you can see it in fo on FOSS or long axis. Here's another case, very similar pattern where within the stent frame, which is the bright white, you can see this hypoattenuating material that is within the sinus of the uh, transcatheter leaflet. Here's another case. Uh, this is, um, again, same pattern where you see the hypoattenuating material within the leaflets. You can also see this in surgical valves. This is a surgical perimount valve, uh, again, with some increased gradients that follow-up identified CT shows a little bit of uh, hypoattenuating leaflet thickening. This is an example of uh, a heart failure patient on a left ventricular assist device. We commonly image these when there are problems related to the left ventricular assist device. But this is just to show that the idea of hypoattenuating leaflet thickening can occur in surgical valves, can occur in transcatheter valves. And here you can see it occurring in a native aortic valve. Here you can see the left main coronary artery and you can see hypoattenuating leaflet thickening. Obviously, when you have a left ventricular assist device, you're offloading uh, the left heart. And so there's no flow going through uh, or minimal flow going through the left heart. The real reason that I wanted to show you this is that although we focused on this talk on the use of dual source for high temporal resolution imaging, there's so much more to modern dual source CT. There's dual energy, there's iterative reconstruction algorithms. And when we look at LVADs, as you can see here, left ventricular assist device, one of the main problems is that you have so much metallic artifact from the LVAD device, and it obscures the ability to look at the anatomy of the heart. However, with dual source CT and iterative reconstruction, we have an ability to do the image on the right, which uses iterative metal artifact reduction, and we're able to dramatically reduce the artifact and increase our imaging uh, of the structures of the heart, both within the ventricle, around the left ventricular assist device, and beyond. So with that, 
I want to thank you very much for your attention. It's been a real pleasure to be with you today and talk about dual source CT and what we can do with very high temporal resolution cardiac CT. Thank you for your attention.